Our first question is what goes into predicting a snow day and what impacts the percentages? Wow, that's a loaded one. Um, what goes into <laughs> predicting a snow day? Um, well, <clears throat> the first ingredient to predicting a snow day, obviously, is snow. Um, so <laughs> if we don't have snow, we're not going to have a snow day. Um, there are some other ingredients, potentially, like ice and sleet and freezing rain. Um, so all those um, hazardous weather types um, have to be forecast to occur. Um, and obviously it has to be over the Hudson Valley and, and, and the Catskills and, you know, where we all live basically. And, um, you know, a large part of it, uh, goes into the geography, the local, um, the lay of the land in the Hudson Valley and the Catskills as, um, you know, we're bordered by mountain ranges on either side. And then in the middle, you know, we have, um, a valley, so lower elevations. And when you have, um, distinct terrain or differing terrain that can lead to different temperatures, and that is kind of what drives some of the time the different um, percentages school by school for a delay or a closing. And then obviously there's also local tendency. So certain superintendents are more uh, prone to predict and, and um, call snow days, believe it or not. Uh, we've known from our friends in Pine Bush that um, they had a bit of trouble last year with, uh, with calling a, a particular snow day. Um, but uh, you guys in Wallkill have a pretty good track record. So um, overall, I, I think, you know, you guys, I mean, maybe you have a different opinion. <laughs> what made you start predicting like the snow days here in the Hudson Valley? Well, um, if you guys don't know, maybe a little bit more about me is that, um, yeah, I grew up in the, in the Hudson Valley in Montgomery. Um, I was born um, in Westchester County, and we moved to the Hudson Valley when I was quite young, just a few years old. So um, the Hudson Valley, that's my roots, you know, that's where I'm from, even though I'm in New Zealand now, you know, 8,000 plus miles away, you know, the Hudson Valley, you know, that's my home. So you got to represent, you know, wherever you go. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, as I went through school, um, it became very evident early on that I had a, um, a passion for weather. Um, the one particular snowstorm that I remember, um, that kind of defined my pathway forward, if you will, um, was a blizzard in 1996. And you guys are probably too young to remember that, um, as I date myself just a little bit, but, um, that was, uh, one that really stuck with me. And, um, yeah, it was that love of snow that kind of catapulted me into predicting um, snowstorms, probably at a mid the middle school time period. And then as I went into high school is when I started to really get into it and I went to Valley Central. Um, so I was kind of known, it was a much, much lower key. I mean, social media really wasn't even a thing back. I mean, it was, it was becoming a thing, but it wasn't really a thing back then as it is now. Um, so I started predicting it in high school, then came college, and there was um, this continued interest. Well, I, you know, I'm going to college, you know, you can't just stop predicting our snow days, right? Like, come on. Um, so, yeah, I went to SUNY Oswego, uh, which is in about four hours away um, in upstate New York, Oswego County, uh, northwest of Syracuse, and they get a tremendous amount of snow up there, um, uh, over 120 inches on average per year. Uh, so it's a... Um, fantastic place to kind of uh, observe uh, the snow, if you like snow, like me. And um, so I continued to make snow day predictions there. I had a, a, a website at that point. And then once I was a junior at Oswego, I got an internship at AccuWeather.com. Some of you guys might have that app. Um, be careful with apps, maybe more on that later. Um, but um, I got an internship at AccuWeather. So that allowed me to really grow my professional uh, abilities in the weather forecasting space. Um, you know, maybe when I was in high school, I was like looking at websites, maybe uh, like a lot of people do, or looking at apps um, and, and kind of collating them or combining them to come up with a forecast idea. But once, you know, you branch into this professional space, you really don't, I don't look at apps. I don't really look at websites that much. I look at weather models and, and satellites and radars to, you know, make my predictions. Um, so it's, yeah, it's very much kind of next, next level in that sense. So yeah, went to AccuWeather, did an internship, went back for my senior year at Oswego, and then I got um, offered a job, a full-time job at AccuWeather. That was in 2013, which is when I graduated Oswego. 
So, I mean, if you get a job, I fast forward, worked at uh, AccuWeather for two years. And then in 2015, I got this email from an old professor at, um, from Oswego. And he had moved to New Zealand to work for um, this company that's uh, in, in, under the crown in the government. Um, and he's like, oh, there's a couple job op- uh, you know, openings here. And, um, you know, I'm just kind of passing this along to my former students to see if anyone's interested. I mean, I'm sure most people kind of ignored it, like New Zealand, you know, 8,000 miles away. You got to pack up, leave everything behind, you know, your family, your friends. Um, but, you know, I thought it was a very unique opportunity. Um, and it was, um, you know, a couple interviews, phone interviews, Skype interviews. And, um, yeah, you know, I, you know, next thing, you know, came to the next and I was offered a job. Like, I mean, I was like, holy smokes, now I have to make this huge decision. You know, it kind of felt like LeBron James and the, and the decision, you know, uh, you know, where, where am I going to go? So, um, yeah, I talked to the parents and, and, um, and friends and that and, and figured that it was kind of once in a lifetime. Like, you know, you can't pass that stuff up. So, uh, yeah, here I am today in New Zealand. And that's just a long winded way of answering your question of how do you predict snow days? <laughs> <laughs> um, does someone else want to ask that for Nate? Yeah. I'll, I- <laughs> Work, um, a little bit, a little bit about my real job, um, as I do have a real job other than making tweets. Um, <laughs> I work for um, the Crown, the New Zealand government, uh, the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research. Um, that's NIWA, N-I-W-A. Um, it is an organization that um, uh, has a broad range of sciences. Um, within basically and experts in fields like fisheries, air quality, um, weather forecasting and modeling, um, climate, um, and much more. And I sit in that weather and climate space within the company, I'm a company of about, oh, 600 odd people, maybe nationwide in New Zealand, a lot of offices around the country. Um, I sit in the Auckland office, which is in the northern part of New Zealand. Um, where we do not see snow. Uh, so yeah, I worked most normal hours, uh, maybe eight to four on most days, uh, which conflicts a little bit with um, predicting snow days because eight to four uh, coincides with, depending on the time of year, will coincide with about 2 p.m. U.S. to 10 p.m. U.S., which is a time that, you know, most people in the U.S. are active, but I'm, you know, working a full-time job. So my lunch break is um, at about 6 p.m., which is oftentimes a, a peak in my tweets um, uh, when there's snow. So that's what I do on a regular basis. Um, you were famous in the Hudson Valley. If you hit it big. <laughs> oh, look, I mean, I, I'm, I, I don't like to use the word famous. I mean, I, I mean, I think I'm pretty well known at this point, but... Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily one for the bright lights. Like I, you know, I'm, I like to stay kind of low key. Um, but that said, I think once, once you start seeing, you know, my parents tell me they see, they've seen some people like wearing my like shirts and, and, and sweatshirts like out in public. I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty surreal. Um, Valley Central on the 24th of October had like this Ben Knoll day. Like, I mean, I, you know, that's awesome. Like, I mean, but at the same time, it's just, it's, it's just a bit surreal. It's a bit, um, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I certainly endorse it and I support it uh, and it feels awesome. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, I'm just here to help. That's kind of my motto. Like I, I enjoy what I do and I enjoy kind of helping, helping you guys out. I mean, who, who doesn't like it? Um, so what was your biggest snow day fail? Like if you've had one? Oh, look, um, nobody's perfect. And, uh, you know, as, as, as I talk to a lot of different people, they're like, oh, I know he's never wrong. I'm like, what? Never wrong. I mean, come on, you know, we're meteorologists here, you know, you, you know, you, you know, we're not going to go up there. Just like you don't expect a baseball player to go up there and get a hit every single time, a basketball player to make every shot and, you know, the lawyer to win every case. You're going to be, you're going to be wrong from time to time. Um, I must say in the last year or two, um, we've been doing pretty darn well. Um, so I'm riding this kind of hot streak, if you will. Um, the, you know, as we know, all the, all the good things must come to an end at some point. So something's bound to happen, uh, but we haven't gotten there yet. So um, biggest fail, I would say, man, if you have to go back a couple of years, maybe it was two, three years, four years ago, probably three or four years ago. Um, <clears throat> one thing in meteorology that's really hard to predict is uh, warm fronts. 
Um, there's a common saying in the weather business, never trust a warm front. Um, <clears throat> warm fronts are these kind of nebulous features in the atmosphere that divide um, warm air and cold air. And when you're dealing with nebulous features in the atmosphere, kind of weak, weak disturbances, those are the toughest one to predict. The big storms, believe it or not, are the really the easiest ones to pick because um, the weather models we use can really grasp on and see these big storms. They're on satellite, they're on radar, they're getting sampled um, by aircraft, um, they're getting sampled by weather stations on the ground. So those big storms, those are actually easier to forecast than those little ones. Um, so just a little warm front was, was tracking through the Hudson Valley. And when that happens in the winter, <clears throat> um, it can, they can surprise in, in the direction that they, they produce more snow than you think, but they can also surprise in the other direction and forecast very little snow. And I think this one uh, was a case where, for, uh, where there was a forecast for eh, maybe an inch, two, three, if you're lucky. And I think there was probably less than an inch and it may not have stuck either. So I think there was then I was lucky enough at that point where I had a, a lower following. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't zero, but most people probably wouldn't remember that one um, unless I told you this. So do you have any plans for like expansion? Like, um, there, sorry, there was like a rumors of like a Ben Knoll app on Twitter. Like, yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, you know, the. Uh, Recently, I think it was Newberg actually that that said that they were having um, a discussion in one of their classes about making uh, some type of an app with uh, you know with my name or my my face or something on it like that. And and um, yeah, I replied to it, and I haven't heard anything back about that. Now, I I personally I do have some you know I do actually have some coding skills and some programming skills. However, making an app is a little bit outside of my personal skill set, so. This is something where I'd actually really be interested in the potential for a crowdsource. Like, can we all make this happen? Like, let, like let Hudson Valley do, let's do this. Or that's my assignment almost. Like, it would be sweet. Like, if um, you know, if that could somehow be accomplished by by the Hudson Valley. Like, I mean, we can all do it together. Like, we can all chip in. I'm sure there's you know, uh, you know, some really brilliant minds out there that would would have some good ideas. Um, you know, in order to kind of execute something like that. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how. Yeah, the, the the logistics or how the app would work. That would kind of be fleshed out or figure that out. But um, it's definitely like an open, you know, put it out there, get the word on the street. Like that would be really cool. I think a lot of people, local people in Hudson Valley, would 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 probably download it and use it. Hopefully, um, in terms of other expansion, um, I get a lot of requests from people that live kind of in adjacent uh, areas. So like places like Rockland County, Westchester County, Putnam County, um, specifically mostly to the South, um, which are still in the Hudson Valley, but maybe a little bit outside of my normal forecast zone. And kind of the challenge with that is actually fitting. See, all the, most of the, the schools that I forecast for are in a, the same kind of forecast zone. So the forecast will shouldn't differ too much um, from Wallkill to to Monroe Woodbury. I mean, there may be subtle differences, and, and that's often why you see some subtle differences in percentages. However, once we start going from Wallkill to White Plains in Westchester County or Wallkill to Albany to the north, there are some there can be some vast differences. So kind of accounting for all of those differences in a singular tweet um, or, or, or a tweet or two is, is quite difficult. So I, I kind of struggle with that um that expansion bit to adjacent places because of that i just simply don't have enough time like i mean i'm i'm flipping i'm making these predictions that at my at my lunch my lunch hour at work and you know i gotta you know be quick and snappy or or you know you know my time is basically up so um i think that i'll probably keep the predictions relatively tight-knit so um, mostly for the the schools that already exist um there may be, yeah. So, I mean, I think the, the greatest place for expansion is either on the website, which is bendol.com or an app, uh, which is, yeah, an open, an open invitation to anyone in the Hudson Valley who'd, who'd want to reach out or tackle that or do something cool. Hey, Ben. <laughs> hey. Uh, Mr. Castle, I'm the superintendent of schools. So, oh, pleasure to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to have a superintendent on the on the other side today, but that's all good. <laughs> so, uh, I've been calling snow days since 2004, 
And actually, it was a little easier back then because I didn't have a cell phone and you didn't have all the apps. So yep. I a phone call from Fleet Weather. You familiar with Fleet Weather? So yes, they, yes, I am. Yep. So they would call and basically whatever they said is what you went with because uh, you didn't have anything else to go with. But now mm -hmm. it's become a little bit more difficult because you got all these apps and you're looking at AccuWeather, you're looking at Weather Channel and Hudson Valley Weather. And now, of course, you're a, a variable on this as well. But I got to share a story. Uh, so I don't know, it was either last year or year before. So I have three kids, two of which are in college. One currently is still in Walk Hill High School. So they would, he would tip report out and say, well, Ben Knoll says we're going to be closing. And I, <laughs> I got to tell you, I would say, I don't care what Ben Knoll says. I, <laughs> well, Fleet Weather tells me, and also we all, the assistant superintendent for uh, support services, he works with me in the morning. It starts at 4 o'clock in the morning, and we get the call, and we call the highway guys to find out what's going on. And then usually by 5, 5.15, we make a decision. So I will tell you, my mindset has changed. Now I say, what's Ben Knoll saying? <laughs> uh, so oh, wow. I will tell you, you were off the other day. We did not close for after school activities, and you had, I think, at 65%. But as I said, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm that. Yeah, I'm not the fondest. That prediction. That was a very tough one. But yeah, continue. <laughs> <to play. laughs> I gotta tell you, I am impressed. Uh, and I know uh, initially you're wreaking havoc on my life because anytime I walk in the building, just say Ben Knoll says we're closing, and I'd say, don't listen to Ben Knoll. You, you figure it <laughs> But uh, now I actually, uh, I don't mind it. And I tell you, you did a great thing. Look at the kids want to interview you. So I know it's a tough job that you do uh, and you're doing it for free. And I got to tell you, uh, we're all appreciative of what you're doing with our kids because they're actually getting interested in weather and they start looking at the weather maps and everything else. And, but, and it's exciting for kids, you know, snow days, as you, as you know, when you're younger. So uh, thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate you giving the time for our students uh, to interview you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. That's a that's a great story, um, and I'm happy I've I've uh, turned you around a little bit over the years. <laughs> and and yeah, you know, look as you said, um, it gets it gets the students excited. And um, as much as it is it is a weather thing, there's a bit of you know an entertainment factor in there. You know, kind of gets them a bit excited. And and um, you know, if it gets people interested um, in this field, which we need a lot. You know, we need more people in this weather and climate space. This is you know something that's only going to grow in time, you know, when you think of things like climate change, um, we're really in this new frontier of weather forecasting. In my opinion, we're in this golden age. So it's, it's an awesome, it's a really good field to get into um, if you have a passion in it. Um, so, so yeah, look, um, you know, that's what, that's, if, you know, follow your passions because if you can get, you know, if you're excited about something and you can get, um, you know, you can get other people excited about that same thing, then, you know, you're, you're doing a good thing. You're doing a good job. So that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of what, you know, what I, I stand by and, um, I'm very, yeah, I'm very happy that I'm able to get you guys all ex as excited about the weather as, as I am. <laughs> uh, can I add you to my call list in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> that 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 call time here in New Zealand might be uh, might be a little bit early there, man. <laughs> Thanks again.